What's up and welcome back to this episode of My Air Compressor Setup is Terrible, Part 5. In this episode, we actually get to run what we've all been waiting for, which is the actual Rapid Air line. I've got both runs through the shop complete, and now we are starting to hook up all the drops for the Rapid Air manifolds. This is the first drop. All you do is cut it with the supplied cutters, use the deburring tool, and chamfer both the ends with it. It actually does it in one setting. Then I want you to mark the compression fitting nut and a guide mark on the actual fitting itself to make sure you get at least a three quarter revolution around the nut to make sure it's tight. Most of mine went to a full revolution and there's nothing wrong with that. They just want to make sure it's absolutely tight. They have you mark them to make sure that you're getting that required revolution. Uh, once I marked one or two, I didn't find it necessary to do it again. You kind of get a feel for it right from the beginning. This is just showing something we've gone over before, how that setup is connected to our paint booth side of the shop with its own hard connection with galvanized pipe, elbows, the unions, the ball valve, and then all five stages of the filtration and water removal. This whole contraption I bought from ATD Air. It is a five stage filtration system. The first stage is a 0 0.05 micron filter. Removes any kind of moisture and particulates. The second stage is a 0 0.01 micron filter. Removes any oil and remaining condensation from the system. The third stage is a desiccant air canister and it just takes desiccant air beads and removes any uncondensed moisture that remains after the first two stages. Here we show in the desiccant air beads. They turn pink when they have absorbed all the moisture that they're going to. And just a little pro tip for anybody who's interested, once they have absorbed the moisture, you don't have to go out and buy another gallon canister, or in this case, these are quart canisters of desiccant air beads. You can just put them in the oven on a cookie sheet at around 400 and bake them for 30 minutes to an hour until it evaporates all of the moisture contained within the beads. Once they are blue again, they are ready for use, and you can reinstall them in the canister and use them once again until they turn pink in color, at which point they will no longer absorb any kind of remaining moisture, and they are ineffective. So you can just pull them out and bake them again and continue to use them until the beads themselves actually break down in their composition. Here I'm installing the first rapid air block into the recess portion. Uh, that is the raised ceiling portion over the two post lift area. And we're going to be setting these blocks up a little bit different. I'll explain later on in the video. But this was just uh, cutting the end off of that rapid air line and doing the same thing, tightening procedure. This fitting came in through the back of the block uh, as we're doing a flush mount uh, style setup here. In most other areas of the shop, I use that top outlet as the inlet uh, for the Rapid Air line to connect to whatever outlet I was dropping into. In this case, we're using the back uh, outlet as an inlet. And in this situation, in my opinion, it just allowed for a much cleaner install when it came to installing the quick couplings and or the lead-in hose for the hose reel. And you're going to see here in just a second, I'm checking the distance from the hose reel and making sure that lead-in hose is going to be able to install in a nice, clean fashion. The day has finally arrived where the final component of the system, this is our first initial three-stage filter regulator combo setup. It's finally got here and I'm ready to install it to be able to start pressure testing you got to be kidding me. Well, that's a little frustrating. But, send an email. Hopefully we'll get a uh, replacement cap in the next couple days without having to send this whole thing back into them. Um, just so you guys know, keeping it real. Let's look at uh, what this package comes with. Alright, it comes with your assembly. One broken adjustment cap. Some desiccant air beads. Here, your regulator adjustment. 
and then the other gauge goes up top for your differential pressure. These gauges are not interchangeable. They are different thread size fittings, so one won't go where the other one's supposed to. All right, there's your desk and air beads that go on this stage. All right, so let's look at what's included in the package of our three-stage uh, filter regulator, coalescing filter, and desiccant air dryer combo. This is just a Edge THB three-quarter inch. has three-quarter inch inlets. has three-quarter inch inlet and a three-quarter inch outlet. This regulator combo can supposedly flow up to, I think it's 145 CFM. So I didn't want this piece to be restricting in any way the flow coming right through the system. It comes with one gauge for your regulator, one gauge for your differential pressure after the coalescing filter to let you know if you have any stoppage or anything once things get clogged up. Your first stage is going to be a 5 micron filter, so it's going to enter here, go through a 5 micron filter, and obviously collect any condensation. Um, these are just manual drains, push bottom. Uh, going to come up through the regulator, regulate it down to pressure. And then it's going to go through your coalescing filter, which is going to remove any kind of remaining moisture and vapor form that didn't get condensed in the first stage. And then it's going to remove any uh, oil in the system as well. This is a 0 0.01 micron filter, and then we'll be able to gauge the differential pressure here. Once this starts dropping off, we know that the filter is clogged. After the coalescing filter, it goes through the third and final stage, which is the desiccant air filter. And this is going in the system uh, right after the main ball valve and right before the refrigerated air dryer system. So we're going to put this thing together, but just put two uh, three quarter inch close nipples on and we'll install it between the unions and that will be the final component in this uh, airline system. So let's get to it. All right, we have finally made it to our last connection, and this is our first outlet of the hard pipe system, which leads into the rapid air pipe, which feeds the rest of the shop. So we're just gonna install the stainless steel fitting in our galvanized T here, and then do the same process we did before, which is cut the pipe, chamfer the ends, and stick the compression fitting on, and tighten appropriately. Perfect. All right, guys, we've got the uh, adjustable cap, the one that was broke in the box that I originally received. It's two days later, we got a replacement cap for it. So shout out to UPE Tools, uh, also located in Georgia. They were able to ship one out here really quick and get this problem solved. The only thing we got to do now is drill two holes and mount it to the wall. All right guys, well there you have it. The cap has been replaced. We've got it mounted. And honestly, the screws to the brick are probably a little overkill seeing as how 
all this is hard piped anyway. It's probably not going to get that much uh, flex or movement in the system anyway, but I just wanted to make sure it's not going to go anywhere regardless. So this section of the airline install is complete. Well, let's move on to the rest of the shop and see what we have to do to finish this project up. All right, guys, we're nearing the end of the completion of this project with the airline install. And I just wanted to go over one last thing before we finish up the final details of what we have left. Uh, and that is, I do have one more rapid air distribution block uh, remaining in the kit that I bought extra, as well as an additional T. These two are going to be used in combination to add one more outlet to a manual hose reel with a 100 foot hose that's going to be located somewhere in the back part of the shop that's not going to get used very often, but that's how I want to mount it in the future. I'm not going to install these things right now because I've still got a lot of work to do on that wall to actually fix it. So we're going to put these on the shelf or in a box somewhere where I can remember that I have them before I go out and buy another uh, set, say six months down the road when I get around to actually doing all this. Uh, but one thing that differs and then I wanted to show you guys before I, I put all this away was most of the airline blocks that are getting fed are coming from the top. So this is how it would typically be set up and then the brass plug would go in the back. So the rapid airline would come in from the top. We would have a female coupler that's going to go on the outside here and we'll show that in the future. And then you have this brass plug here in the back to prevent obviously any air escaping from the back. We have our little drain. And that's how most of the outlets here in the shop are set up. Some are hard plumbed into filters or ball valves or things like that. But most of them are gonna be set up in this manner. The ones that are in the recess portion uh, where the lift is and where I'm gonna have the hose reels, they're set up a little bit differently and I kinda of wanted to go over that with you in case you wanna do this setup as well. On those two outlets, I've got the max line being fed from behind the wall. So this is just flush mounted and the airline comes straight in to the back. The stainless steel fitting screws into the aluminum block and I've got just a nice easy curve of the actual rapid air pipe feeding it. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do it that way. My access to behind the block may be a little bit different than what you have available to you. So I wanted to go over another option, one that I was thinking about prior to doing what I did. Obviously, for me, this was the best case scenario because it's just the one connection. It's just the rapid air to the compression fitting, to the NPT threads on the stainless steel fitting, to the rapid air block, which is what all of these other ones in the shop are connected by. What I was experimenting with was having to hook up uh, a brass nipple and an elbow. Now I'm not gonna take these out of the package because I intend to return them, uh, but this is just a two and a half, three inch, uh, half inch brass nipple that will go back here and screw in with MPT threads. And then we would screw in an elbow and orient that accordingly before we would screw in our stainless steel fitting using thread sealant and Teflon tape on all these fittings. Uh, I was gonna do it that way. I found out I didn't have to because of the exposed area I had around behind the wall. But if you have a tight confined space and you can't really get away from doing it that way, the only other option will be to fit this in and then have a, a tight piece, maybe a one or two inch piece of rapid air line. And then you would put a 90 degree rapid air fitting on that. Those fittings are uh, usually about 15 bucks, so they're not cheap. Uh, I wanted to avoid using any extra rapid air fittings that I had to use. So I went with the brass nipple and elbow. I don't know that it was any cheaper, but that was an option I was thinking about. I just didn't want to have three compression fittings in that close proximity. Ultimately, I didn't have to do that. Like I said, there was enough area behind it to where I could just easily curve that rapid air pipe to where it needed to go all along the way. And again, having that at least quarter inch of fall per foot to allow it to drain. If any water did get up to that point, would allow me to drain it at the bottom of this. My rapid air distribution blocks in the recess portion are gonna be set up a little bit differently. We're gonna have the hose reel coming plumb straight in to here. And we're just gonna use these hex bushings 
It's just half inch MPT thread, two quarter inch outlet. The half inch MPT is male, the quarter inch is female threads. And we're just gonna screw the hose straight into this. Because the hose reel does come with that swivel fitting, it will allow us to screw in that three foot whip or three foot lead in hose. Those terms are used interchangeably. Uh, it will allow us to screw it into here and screw it straight into the side of the hose reel and not have any fear of that hose being twisted or binding up during the installation process. That allowed me to come up with the other idea that I'm just going to use another bushing on the front of this. And we're just going to hook up a female coupler straight to the front of the block as well. This will be the lead-in whip hose leading to the... Um, hose reel, the Tecton hose reel that I have in the recessed portion of the shop that is above the two post lift. And this is just going to be a normal quick coupler. I don't think I'll ever climb up the ladder and actually hook something up to it, but you never know. So I'm going to install it this way just to give me the opportunity and the ability to in the future to if I need a little quick drop hose without using the reel for whatever reason that it's there and available. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to click like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notifications. That way you get in touch, in tune with all of the stuff we post as quick as we post it. Once again, we appreciate you watching. And until next time, if you're not going to watch this stuff, why don't you get out in your shop and go build something?